Hi guys, today we're going to talk about the fluid well meter, how to set it up, what the display tells you, and how to uh, uh, program the unit. This is your typical operating screen here. We're going to cover the LCD and what it's telling you here. Right now it's indicating we're in the run mode. This is your total in U.S. gallons. And then we also have a uh, flow rate indication here in gallons per second. Um, the demo itself is a battery powered unit and we're simulating a pulse input from a flow meter with our little uh, switch here. To simulate flow, just push the buttons in, you'll see the totalizer count up, and then you'll also see the flow rate is indicated here on the bottom. This is a NEMA 4X aluminum enclosure for the demo. We have three push buttons here that we can utilize to set up the meter, and let's cover that now. The most basic function of the meter, uh, you can use the select key, and it's important on how you push these buttons. You want to just push and release. If I push it just once, you'll see the uh, accumulated grand total. Uh, this is a non-resettable totalizer, so that's the most basic function of your select button here. If I push it again, it goes back to flow rate. To reset your totalizer while you're in the run mode, again, it's just push and release. I'm going to double click the clear button, so I'll hit it once. It will ask me to push clear to reset. If I hit it again, see my total went back to zero. Now to get into programming the unit, we're going to use the program key, and I need to hold this button down for seven seconds to enter the uh, programming mode. What you'll notice is the run mode will change to programming, and that will enable us to get into the menu structure of the meter. So I'm going to push this guy in. I'm going to wait for seven seconds. And now we're into the programming mode of the meter. To traverse the different menus here, it's very simple and straightforward. The top of the menus are, are accessible by hitting the right arrow key, and you'll see total, flow rate, display, uh, power management, flow meter, others, which is uh, some diagnostic information as far as your tag numbers and model number, serial number, and things like that, and then I'll wrap around back to total. To set the meter up and configure it, to drop into any of the, the main menus here, you're going to utilize your select key. So I'll hit it once, you'll see units. Now to program it or change the units, right now I'm in US gallons, to change it, just push and release the program key. You'll notice now I'm in programs flashing, units, and now I can scroll through the various units here, US gallons, gallons, pounds, kilograms, and then you just scroll through until you see the engineering units that you want. I'm going to leave this in US gallons. When you see what you want, hit the program key again to enter it. Notice it comes back out of programming. To go back up to the next thing under the totalizer menu, I just hit the select key. Now we're in for decimal points of the totalizer. Right now I have no decimal points. I'm going to leave it that way. Click it again. You're to the K factor. The K factor right now is set for one. For an effective demo, you want to leave this at one. That way every pulse that you're generating with the little switch is going to register as a count of one. Next up is the decimal points for your K factor. Hit it again, you're back to the top of the menu. To get to the next menu, we'll just click over. Flow rate, let's go set that up. I'll hit select. It's going to ask me what units do I want to set up in. If I don't like gallons, again, I can change that by pro hitting the programming key and then scroll through your different options. Tons, kilograms, grams. There's a multitude of different selections here. I'm going to set this up for gallons. You also have user-defined values that you can program in there. And I just went past it, so all you need to do is just keep scrolling around. Back again to, to what you want. Barrels, gallons, perfect. Hit enter. I've locked that in. Next thing it's going to ask you is what time base that you want. Again, program. I'm over here now. I can change this to seconds, days, hours, minutes. I'm going to leave that in terms of seconds because that's a little better for an effective quick demo. When you see what you like, again, program, and it locks it in. Next would be your decimal point for your flow rate, your K factor for your flow rate. Again, this is set at one for your demo. That way every click registers as a pulse. Uh, decimal point for your K factor. This is uh, calculate. Now, this is basically a filtering option that you have available with the unit. Ours is set for three. I'll leave it that way. This is your low flow cutoff. Basically, this enables you to 
have the meter go to zero if you're at a low flow condition and you want the meter to read zero in terms of gallons per second as we have it set up here. Hit it again, you'll see I return back to the top of the menu. I can arrow over to display. If I drop into the display function, I've, right now I'm indicating total, but maybe I want my rate to be on my top line. What I'll do here is again, program, change it to rate, enter it, and it's locked in. To change it back to total for your ma main display there, again, it's just simple program, change it, lock it in, you're back to business there. If I go up, this talks about the backlight. Do you want it on or off? If it's green, right now I have it turned off. Uh, brightness, you can change the LCD brightness of the unit, and then you're back to the top of the menu. Hit it over again, power management. That would be if you're running off a battery, you want to turn this off, or how do you want the unit to behave? We'll go into flow meter and to select that again. We'll just drop into the menu. Right now, I have a read switch input, which is just the little contact closure I'm supplying it. This is where you would establish what your input's going to be. To change that input on a meter, again, it's just flip it through, NPN. There's all kinds of different options here that you can look up in the manual, depending on what you're going to select for the unit. I'm just going to leave it at read switch. Lock it in by hitting program. You're back to the top of the menu. Let's hit one more. This is the other menu. To get into there, we're just going to hit select. This is the model. Our particular demo is an F012P for pulse. This takes a pulse input. Um, we arrow up again. You'll see the software version. You'll also see the serial number. The serial number will tell you when the unit was actually manufactured, and our particular demo was manufactured in 2006. This will tell you the date code of when it was actually produced. You can look that up in the manual also. Password. Important thing with any time you have push buttons, guys are always worried about somebody coming in and screwing around with the unit. You can put a password in here. I'd suggest not doing that on the demo because invariably someone forgets what that is. Hit it again. Uh, this is your tagging information. You could put a tag number for the particular display in here if you like, and then you return back to the menu. If I hit the arrow over again, you'll see I'm back to the total menu. That's the complete programming of this uh, flow rate indicator. To jump out of programming, there's two ways to do it. One is to let the unit time out, which takes two minutes before it will go back to the run mode, or a quicker way is just hold in your programming key for two seconds, and it will return back to the run mode. There you go. Now in this case, I can just simulate a flow by pushing the button. You can see my totalizer counting. You can see the flow rate on the bottom lower uh, right-hand corner there. And again, to reset the unit, clear, clear, and you'll reset your totalizer back to zero. There are a multitude of different options available depending on what your flow meter is. Again, you're going to select it based on what the input type is. So whether it's a 4 to 20, or pulse, a read switch, what have you, and depending on what options you want to have available, is dictate what uh, particular model that you're going to go with. You also have the ability to take in any analog signal, as well as the thermocouple or RTD uh, for the temperature versions. And that will take care of it. Hopefully, you guys, have a good day.